Hi, it's Dr. Sonia and Dr. Krissa. Again, we're jumping on for another uh, video with a question that we get all the time. We um, have been asked for probably almost 20 years, how do we test Lyme disease? And so I've learned so much from Krissa on this topic. I'm gonna turn it over to you uh, because I get this question from my patients all the time and I, I go through the step-by-step -step process that you gave me. So let's share that with everyone. Great, okay. So, I mean, we've sort of developed our own step-by-step -step process. Um, we do um, mirror the, 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 the international diagnostic for Lyme, but at the end of the day, if someone's seen a bullseye rash, that's already diagnostic of a systemic Lyme infection. So you have, have had Lyme infection disease transmitted to you. It doesn't actually have to be like where you were bit. You could have bit one place and a bullseye somewhere else. A bullseye can pop up three years later after a bite. It's not actually a, hey, I got bit and a local reaction happened. A bullseye reaction is a systemic response to only Lyme infection. So that's already 100% transmission. If you have it now, that's another question. So the EM rash or the, the bullseye rash is, yes, you have had Lyme exposure. So that's number one. The number, the number two is the type of testing you can do step-by-step -step assessment. So the first thing we, we talk about is going to your doctor and asking for a Lyme test. That's a, a C10 ELISA test, and it's covered by OHIP, and your doctor can run it. Um, those tests have a bad reputation for, for a reason. Um, they have a bad reputation because they're very accurate. And so accuracy, they're about 92 to 93% accurate, which is good, but because they're so accurate, they actually miss cases. And that's what we worry about. So we tell people, if you think you have Lyme, um, and you you um, have you know multiple symptoms that that don't make a lot of sense. Sometimes we get them to fill out the, the Horowitz questionnaire. If you get over 95, 97 on the Horowitz questionnaire, then do think about these ideas. Do a Canadian Lyme test, the C's 10 ELISA. If that's negative, please get two negative tests. So the second test would be a Western blot or an immunoblot. And those tests err on the side of sensitivity, so they catch more cases. So we say, if you think you have Lyme, get two negative tests and then close the chapter on Lyme. So the second test or the second tier is called a Western blot test. And that will test for any, and these tests, both of them are about past exposure. They're not gonna tell you about, hey, do I have any Lyme infection right now? That's a third test. So if you have a negative Canadian test, a C10 ELISA and a negative Western blot or immunoblot, you have not had Lyme exposure. People ask about, well, I think I have Lyme. I'm pretty sure I had a bullseye. I have actually had a positive. Now what do I do? How much Lyme do I have in my body right now? That test is called an Ellie spot test. So those are the three tests that we talk about, but we don't talk about the Ellie spot as a diagnostic criteria because it is also very accurate and sometimes it misses cases. So that's a quick little review on the step-by-step -step process on how we talk about doing Lyme testing. Thank you. That's great. Um, I, I get this question a lot with uh, autism and things like pandas or, or ticks, because we know there's a microbial influence, but we're not, you know, we're not sure how to test it, how to confirm it. And I wondered if you could speak a little bit on congenital um, transmission of Lyme. Right. So the, the seronegative test, so that's those, are the two tests we talked about is about your immune system. So the two tests, the, the C10 ELISA test and the um, Western blots or the immune blots are about your immune system witnessing the past exposure of Lyme. So they're not actually catching Lyme like a PCR test, like, you know, COVID tests, the, those are PCR testing. They become very popular. We, we learned about the, the COVID PCR testing. That's catching a piece of the DNA and actually finding an alive DNA. The test that we're talking about is asking the immune system, hey, did you see that infection? The problem is if you're born with Lyme, you have congenital Lyme, you're as a mom, you transfer that infection onto the baby. The baby actually thinks that's normal. They don't have a weird response to the infection because they were born with the infection. So those babies are called zero, zero, zero negative, and they have active infection, but their immune system is neglecting to tell them. So their testing is hard. I mean, the Lyme testing it is very controversial because it's fraught with, with you know, good goods and bad parts about the testing, and there's not a great specific test for lots of kids. So those kids, you do more different types of tests to sort of confirm the testing or try to get that accuracy. But those kids are more likely to have LA spot positives. And the two we talked about, number one and number two, they would actually more likely be negative for those kids. Cool.
Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, one of the things that you taught me was that Lyme depletes manganese and that manganese is something that our body, our white blood cells need to go and then kill all microbes. So in fact, Lyme then opens the door to many, many, many other microbes, which in the in the Lyme world, you guys sort of term co-infections, right? So I definitely will see the co-infections when we do tests. And I think that uh, plus a good family history and some of the symptoms in the Horowitz or even Dr. Armin's co-infection checklist that you have recommended over the years. That's what I send to my families when I suspect congenital Lyme because, and, and again, you've taught me all this. So I just, but, you know, Lyme is not that hard to kill if you can find it. So once we can get the manganese levels up and the methylation supported and the right diet, uh, it's all about persistence with killing Lyme. Yeah, working on biofilm, making sure the constipation isn't an issue. It, it's a step by step process, but we are we, we've been really fortunate to have success in our in our, our our patients and see them get better. It isn't fast, but it is consistent, which is nice to be a part of. Great. Okay. Anything else before we uh, say goodbye for now? No, I think that's that's what we'll kind of talk about for the Lyme testing piece. Okay.